I will never run without a plan. I'll run in that direction and see what happens. Hi, this is Tom from Into the Forest I Go and if this is your first time on this channel, this is a channel for orienteering and we are here all to learn but also to have some fun along the way, hence the intro of this video. Um, today we are going to be talking about picking route choices again because we've already had one video previous week on this topic. I've been talking with my daughter Hannah about some simple route choices. Today I'm going to get a little bit more into this, so we will talk about more advanced strategies for route choice picks, but also I want to give you an intro into what's going to happen on this channel next week, because next week I'm going to have here two super cool guests, Simone Abersold and Casper Fosser, and together with them I'm going to be picking some interesting legs to talk about which way would they go, how would they tackle this, like how would they find the control and that's going to be really really interesting and that's going to be the summer of this short series of root choice picking. So stay with me in this video to learn more about the theory and then anticipate the next week because we're going to have a lot of fun next week as well. The first thing I want to mention when it comes to picking root choices is that you need to be smart. Oh, thanks Tom, I didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah, what I mean is that you need to play into your strengths. So as a runner, you have some areas that you feel better at. And maybe it's keeping direction while running just with the compass. Maybe it's navigating along the contours. Maybe it's finding some very specific elements in the forest, which I honestly don't feel very strong about. So for example, when I, I'm supposed to find a rootstock or a single rock in a forest, it, it is a challenge for me. And if I have another option, I will take another option. But sometimes I don't have an option, right? So I don't have a choice. But what I mean is you should definitely know your strengths and pick root choices that support those. Okay, because then you will feel more confident while realizing the root choice that you've picked. At the same time, there is a saying that goes that you're as strong as your weakest link, as your weakest element. So I want to emphasize that the first part, so pick root choices according to your strengths, it applies when you're actually doing the competition, you're running the competition but you also want to work on your weak sides so therefore during the training sessions you might actually pick the root choices that are deliberately harder for you so that you can practice and you can learn more from those sessions. So during the races definitely play into your strengths, during the training sessions definitely try to work on those weaker sides of your orienteering technique. Something that happens way too often when I'm talking with people about their route choices is that they tell me that they tried to find a control but they missed it just by a few meters or 10 meters or 15 meters and therefore unfortunately they've made a mistake of and here you can enter any amount of minutes you want because it's really the whole range. Now why do people do that? I think that most most of the time this is caused by the lack of the attack point. So you're trying to approach the control but you don't know exactly from which spot you're attacking. Therefore you cannot set your compass precisely, you cannot set your map precisely in the direction that you want to go to and therefore it's more possible that you're actually going to miss the control and you might be absolutely right, it might have been just 10 or 15 meters away from you and maybe if you've looked to the left or to the right you would have seen it but you didn't because you've messed up the approach to the control, maybe, possibly. Therefore, my theory is that every time you make a plan you should start by making a plan from your current control that you're at or the one that you will be running from to not the next control but actually to the attack point to the next control and that sometimes makes a difference because it happens that if you want to approach the attack point rather than the control itself and the attack point might be 100 meters away from the control sometimes even further away sometimes closer if you have um, good good choices for the attack point but what will happen is that you will be picking the root choice 
to the attack point, not to the control. Therefore, it might change the root choice that you will pick because maybe when you look uh, how the root choice would look like to the control, it would make more sense to go from the left, but to the attack point, it actually makes more sense to go from the right. Okay, so be aware of that. Always search for an attack point because it's going to help you minimize those unwanted, really unwanted mistakes that happen during our races. One of the trickiest parts when it comes to picking a root choice is definitely generalization. That means that you basically don't want to find everything that you can along the leg that you pick, but you want to focus on the elements that will be the easiest to find. And now that's the skill that I could probably record a separate video about, and maybe I will in the future. But I want to put it here because it's such an important part of picking the right root choice. You don't want to be fighting every small pit, every rootstock, every tiny gully, every change in the greenery of the forest, every vegetation boundary and so on and so on. Because this will slow you down significantly while running. That's why when you're picking the root choice you want to focus on several elements, as few as possible, that will allow you to navigate comfortably running with full uh, racing speed, but at the same time will give you enough confidence that you are in the right place and you are going along the, along the route choice that you've picked. So this is, you know, as I said, it, it, it requires a lot of explanation, but if you're not aware of it or you haven't been aware of it, Think about it. What are the elements that you see well in the forest? Is it contours? Is it stone walls, rock walls? Is it maybe changes in the vegetation, right? Find something that gives you confidence. Find something that you will know that, okay, this element it will be easy to see. Any open areas are definitely something to consider here. Any roads, especially the bigger ones, are definitely something that, that belongs to this category, right? So think along these lines when you're picking the route choice so that you're not wasting time searching for tiny elements. If you find those tiny elements while you're running, that's fine. You can just take a quick glance on the map. Oh, I'm, I'm passing um, a big rock. Is the big rock on the map? along my route choice, it's, it is, right? So, okay, I know exactly where I am right now, but it doesn't really matter because two or 300 meters um, in front of me, there's going to be a big road that catches me one way or another, and it's not possible to make a mistake there, right? This is what I mean. Generalize as much as possible, but do it in a smart way so that it uses the features that are most visible in the terrain that you're currently in because there are definitely differences between one area and another and you need to be aware of that as well. This one might be super obvious, but I'm still going to say it. Use paths as much as possible, as much as it makes sense, especially in the terrain that is really hard when it comes to runnability. So, for example, something that comes to my mind is that when you're running through the Scandinavian terrain, Sometimes it actually makes a lot of sense to just go along the forest, through the forest, and without worrying too much about the pass. So it of course depends again on the type of the Scandinavian terrain because there are different ones, but they definitely have lots of terrains that are really good when it comes to runnability. The same happens in all the Europe. There are forests which will be quite dense and will have lots of undergrowth and it's hard to go through. You have to plow through all those bushes and, and grasses that are pulling on your legs. But at the same time, there are beautiful, wonderful forests that looks like a tarmac. And it's just such a pleasure to run through it. So why would you go to the road, right? But one way or another, if it's a possibility to use a path or a road and it's close to your route choice and it um, doesn't make you go far away from the line, the direct line connecting you with the next control, you should definitely consider it. First of all, because of the runnability, but I will also add another element that might help you decide whether to pick the road or not. So what I'm talking about is that the, when you use the road, you minimize the chances of making a mistake and you know exactly where you are. 
you know exactly where you are and it, and it's helpful to kind of help you move along the route choice from point A to point B without losing any confidence and that's very very important. I will be talking about this a little bit more probably in uh, two weeks time but that's something that absolutely helps a lot. The next one is almost as obvious as using paths. Read the contours. Read the contours because they will tell you uh, not only how the terrain looks like and help you understand what you, what you will see in front of you uh, while you're running, but also they will help you avoid climbing too much. So if you don't feel a very strong climber and you sometimes prefer maybe to go a little bit longer but on a flat terrain, you will definitely want to take a look at the contours. Another thing that is really tricky over here is that on some maps it's sometimes difficult to understand where is the hill and where is the valley, where is the top, where is the bottom. So sometimes it makes sense to slow down, to read it carefully, because um, you might fall into the trap of picking the route choice that is close to the line, so you might feel very happy about it while picking it, but later on it will be like this, right? And that's something you do not want. What you want is to get as little contours as possible, but also not to go too much around it. Now, what is the ratio between running up and going around, right? What, what is the ratio? It will be different for each of you. So it depends on the person, depends how fast you are, how strong of a climber you are. So you should figure it out by yourself and it's really an easy, something easy to do during a simple training session as, it, as long as you have a little bit of a climb. And then you will know that, for example, if you have to go up 10 contours, it might make sense to do additional three or 400 meters. But it's, if it's 600 meters, maybe you should take the climb after all. So try to figure it out and weave it into your root choice picking strategy later on. Colors, of course, make a difference on the map too. So you're probably aware of the runnability of different shades of green that are available on the map before you enter the race, especially if it's an important one. And that's definitely something you have to take into consideration as well. And this seems pretty obvious, but it's still worth mentioning because it happens sometimes that you might run into quite a lot of trouble. An example that comes to my mind is just this year, we've been training a lot in Portugal. And in Portugal, you get this darker green sometimes that is really a narrow stripe on the map. And you might be thinking, well, it's so narrow. I might just go through it, you know, like brave through it, right? I, I will plow through, strengthen myself and just, you know, it's, it's maybe three or four meters. I can do this. <laughs> no, you can't because you will just meet a huge wall of blueberry bushes or all thorny, super dense, and it's almost impossible to go through something like this. So even though it's just a tiny stripe, green stripe on the map, it might totally mess up your route choice and it, you, you would have been probably so much better going around it. So this is definitely something that also has to be taken into account. And it's not only in Portugal, but everywhere, right? So there are different shades of green. And if the root choice, your root choice, is supposed to be going through a dark green area or even medium green area, you should definitely consider your other options because maybe there is something better to use. Sometimes there isn't and you, and you just have to go through the green area. So be it, right? But if there are other options, why not consider them? Do you have a backup plan when you're running? Well, if you don't, then you're probably very confident when it comes to your skills. I'm definitely not that confident and it happens sometimes. They take a look at the map and I'm like, oh crap, this control might be troubles. What do I do? What do I do? Right, and there are several things that you can figure out. You might just slow down while approaching the control, but sometimes there are actually features behind the control that give you confidence that even if you miss the control, you will be able to quickly bounce off an element and attack the control again without losing too much time. Therefore, you don't have to slow down. You can approach the control at full speed, but because you have a backup plan. And 
as I said, it happens sometimes, not very often, but if it presents to your, to, to, if it's presented to you, take this opportunity because it's a gift. And if you don't use it, you're just wasting it. Of course, you might still approach the control slower if you want to, and still use the backup plan if you are not able to find a control. And the, con the controls I'm talking about in this kind of situation uh, or situations are pits in the green areas, for example, right? Without any, any distinctive feature around those. It might be tricky sometimes, and if you miss them just by five to 10 meters, especially in night orienteering, which happened to me once during this year, uh, it, it's hard to find those controls. So if you, if you are able to have a backup plan in these situations, why not use it? Why not use it? When I asked my wife about her advices uh, when it comes to picking route choices, she said two things. Do it fast. Trust your intuition. <laughs> So, yeah, I guess it's a good advice as well. You don't want to spend a lot of time picking up root choice, standing in place. But at the same time, if there is a very long lag and you don't know how to tackle it and you have to make a decision, sometimes it actually makes sense to stop and make an investment before picking the root choice um, because these kind of long lags, sometimes the, the right root choice and, and the bad root choice, there might be a difference uh, of uh, one, two, sometimes even three minutes. So it definitely pays off to sometimes stop and think about it. But at the same time, you want to trust your intuition. If you are an athlete that has been doing orienteering for a long time, you probably already have intuition and you would be more inclined to pick better route choices, especially if and that's the next point I want to get to, something super, super important. I left it for the end, but this is definitely something that we should all remember about and do it, especially if you're also doing some dry practice when it comes to picking root choices. What do I mean by this? Well, what I mean is that you look at the maps, especially the ones you haven't run before, and the courses on those maps, and you try to pick the route choices without really running them. Nowadays, it's so easy to do. You just go to live logs or any other website that has these um, post analysis races. You just launch any map, take a look at it and think, how would, what would I tackle this particular leg? And then later on, you can even turn on the runners and see how they did when it came to, um, to the leg that you were thinking about so that you can see if the best runners in a category confirm your choice or maybe they have noticed something else that you didn't. And this is how you learn. This is how you train your intuition so that later on during the race, it actually helps. And that would be all that I've prepared for you today. Now I do realize that this hasn't been rocket science. This is still quite close to basics. So I'm calling this advanced because there are definitely less advanced um, advices I can give you, which I did in the previous video, but this is still something that will help you pick the better root choice. But the reality is that the mistakes are often made not while picking the root choice, but when you're actually running it. So this is definitely something that I will have to tackle in one of the videos in the future. And I will, I promise you I will, because there are lots of elements that come into play when you're trying to finish up the root choice that you've picked. Now, if you think that the advices I've given in this video are lacking something and you want to share an additional element that is very important while picking root choices, please do this. Let's see if you can mention something that I did not mention here, but Simona or Casper are going to mention in a video next week. This is a challenge. If you've liked this video, give it a like. If you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing and I'll be seeing you next week.